Come on, though. It was my fault. I distracted you. No, you made it easier. Losing for real. <laughs> We're better against ourselves. Reckon we'll have cleaned up here. Here's your winnings. <laughs> what about you, Prince? I'll see you at the tavern, lads. What's this? It ain't enough for you to set up home again in village. But it's enough to get the lad away from Bamford. Take the children and leave here. Tess, I did wrong. I admit it, I'm sorry that I hurt you. But I'm ready to pay to the utmost farthing. I will give you clothes and money. I should not take anything from you. Well, then I can say no more. I was born bad. I have lived bad and I shall die bad, most likely. But I won't be bad towards you, Tess, not again. I'm going away to London for a while. But if certain circumstances should arise, just send me one line and you shall have everything that you need. Let us part friends. One last kiss. What pleasure is there for you if it is against my will? Oh, come, Tess. Don't be melancholy. You will never love me, will you, Tess? I cannot believe that she is guilty of such abominable crimes. <clears throat> Yet I, I, I cannot think that the king would have proceeded so far unless she was culpable. The fact is, Mr. Cromwell, that I loved her not a little for the love which I judged her to bear towards God and the gospel. I was most bound to her of all creatures living. You must learn to live without her. Without her, but without her is not our reformation in danger? Was she not our great supporter and advocate? She likely to become our greatest liability. His Majesty is waiting for Your Grace to discover a reason why his marriage to Anne Boleyn should be considered null and void. Eusebius. Remember what Percy has said. Eyes down. Well, Inspector, I have five minutes before my next engagement. So why don't you regale me with your stories of conspiracy? How many members of Parliament do you intend to murder at noon today? Man, ox, eagle, lion? The lion is Parliament, isn't it? Very clever. But it's not murder, Mr. Holmes. It's mercy. We are giving the weak masses a strong shepherd. Don't you see that it's for their own... policy will not be dictated by public opinion. While we hesitate over Ireland, we give Tyrone and his rebels time to amass yet more Spanish support. We play into their hands. We will not be goaded into war on the say-so of a hothead with delusions of adequacy. You will not turn your back on me, sir! I am not done with you yet! Is it a hothead who has the people screaming my name from every rooftop? They know that England's glory lies not in the relics of the past but in a vision of greatness which can again be ours. I will teach you manners yet! No woman shall strike me thus! Queen or not! 